<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is Boss Vision, and I have an amazing video for you today. So this will be part two of a series that I'm doing with Melissa from Makesy. Yes, guys, so amazing. I got an opportunity to chat with her today just about my transition from full-time uh, software sales account executive to full-time entrepreneur. So it's been phenomenal chatting with her about that. And in today's video, we're going to discuss the importance of burn testing. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, when you are getting started with your business, you want to put your best foot forward and make sure that your customers feel confident that they can trust you to have a reliable long burning candle. And with mm -hmm. that comes, uh, you know, the really important uh, I'd say burn test requirements. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, I think that burn tests are um, ongoing. You should always be uh, tweaking your wicks and identifying what works best. And just as it relates to my current process, I do focus on making sure that I burn, uh, do a burn test for a full 12 hour intervals just to understand whether or not um, that wick would be safe, but I'd love to get Melissa's opinion on her process there as an expert. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Super excited to be on the Boss Vision channel. Talisha, you're amazing um, and super excited to be with you guys today. So burn testing. Man, I started with the Wood & Wick Co. as our customer service agent way, way, way back when we were first the little baby Wood & Wick Co. And um, I learned so much so quickly about candles and wicks and all the things. So burn testing, <laughs> I know it's like the bane of most people's existence. Um, I know that as makers um, and people too, who just want to, maybe your heart isn't necessarily to be a creative maker, but you really want to create a business that is fun and, and, and somewhat simple. Um, out of a handmade product and uh, maybe candle making is that avenue. And I hear a lot of times that people don't want to burn test because they want just that quick, they just want to be told what wick to use and have it be perfect. And unfortunately, everyone, I know it's hard to hear, but that is not going to make a good product. <laughs> that is not going to bring you success. And the reason why is because there are so many variables that go into the wick success. And um, it's hard to see unless you're actually getting into the granular. But I like to remind people that candle making is just as much of an art as, as, it, as it is a science. And so getting into the nitty gritty science of candle making is that you're dealing with combustion. <laughs> Big science term, combustion. And so what is actually happening in your candle is that the, um, the wood material or cotton material or whatever material you're using for your wick um, is basically acting as a capillary and it is pulling the wax up the capillaries. And when that happens and heat is introduced, they explode. And that is what creates the flame and feeds the flame. And that is how that whole process works. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yep. So little mini science experiments happening inside of your candles at all times. So so now that you understand that, and if you did it, if you did, awesome. If you didn't, just a little bit of info about how the candle actually works. Um, and so when you're introducing things like fragrance, if you're introducing things like dye, um, the fragrance load will have a have an impact on how your candle behaves. The wax type will have an impact on how your candle behaves. And your melt or um, your diameter of whatever vessel you're using will influence how your candle behaves. And so these are all important factors to figure in or to factor in when you are um, creating your candles. And that is why burn testing is so important because one fragrance might behave differently in the same wax than another fragrance. And then if you added dye to another candle, it may behave differently <laughs> than if you didn't add dye and so on and so forth. So that's the first thing to really keep in mind is that you're dealing with a lot of different variables that will um, influence how your candle behaves. And so I've seen a lot of people sometimes um, get really discouraged when they put, they buy one wick that they think is right for their wax type. And then they get discouraged when they find out it doesn't work for every single one of their fragrances. And that is because fragrance compounds or fragrances are their own chemicals, right? They have their own 
I hate using the word chemical because I know it's like such a ooh, word for people sometimes, but um, the fact of the matter is scientifically, the fragrances are made out of chemical compounds. Um, and whether they're natural chemical compounds, they're bioidentical chemical pop compounds, blah, 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 um, or their um, or their essential oils or whatever the chemical makeup of your fragrance is, um, it, they all contain slightly different compounds that are naturally occurring. And so a cinnamon fragrance might behave and burn a little bit hotter than say a lemon fragrance because of how what what's actually in the fragrance that makes that fragrance. <laughs> and so I always like to remind people that it's really important to burn test. And um, with wooden wicks specifically, Talisha, I don't um, I don't know. Do you have a preference uh, that you like to use uh, for your candles? Currently, I use cotton wicks, but I've always mm -hmm. been open to wooden wicks just because of that crackling of some types, and then they just provide this ambiance. But yeah, I know okay. it's harder to get. Um, an even melt pool with wooden wicks is what I remember. Interesting. Well, I'm hoping to debunk that for you right now. So <laughs> hopefully I can educate you and then everybody watching that it's actually not as hard as you think it might be. So there are, there are two important factors, talking about wooden wicks specifically, there are two really important factors to think about when you are burn testing a wooden wick. And that is the thickness and the width are the two um, factors that you have to work with. And so we have created a wick selection guide um, on our website and that that's not like the end all be all. And I always like to remind people that like it's there as a guide, like the guide is there to help you but it's not there to give you the answer. Um, and so basically you go to the wick selection guide, you type in your diameter, your desired uh, wax type, and a couple other different specifications and it spits out a few different examples of what wick you want to start burn testing with. This is like your baseline for your burn tests. And so when you burn test this, you are looking for a few different factors. You're looking for if you're getting a full melt pool in two to three hours, you look for if your flame is reaching about a half inch um, of in flame height. If it's any higher than that, it might be burning a little hot. If it's any lower than that, it may be burning a little bit too cool. If it doesn't light, obviously that means that something is up and you need more wick material. Um, if, you're, if your candle isn't lighting, that means that you need more wick material and you'll need a larger wick, whether it's width or thickness. So once you kind of have those, those metrics and you're watching the candle burn, if you're not getting a full melt pool and your, um, your candle is tunneling, that is a good sign that your wick is too narrow, that you need a wider wick because the width will influence the melt pool size and the thickness will influence the overall burn of the candle. So I know throwing a lot of information at you, <laughs> but I, trust me, it's actually really easy once you get the hang of like what you're looking for. You're like, okay, like this is not, this is tunneling. I need a wider wick. This is not lighting. I need a thicker wick. Like you kind of start to, to get to know the wicks and get to, get to see which which uh, variations you need to make in order to make the, the candle successful. And so um, I always tell people uh, to be patient with it. And the wick selection guide is very accurate. Um, if you're putting in the correct information, um, it is very accurate. But again, things like dye and if, you're in, if your fragrance load is super high, like if you're using a 12% fragrance load, um, your candle may burn hotter um, than if you're using a 8% fragrance load and so on and so forth, just because you're adding more oil and think of oil as more fuel to your fire. Um, and so things like that to consider. Um, but essentially the thickness, for example, if you started out with a 0.625 width and a 0.02 thickness, and you are getting a nice full melt pool in two to three hours, but it seems like it's burning way, way too hot and your candle flame is like an inch high, um, that's a good indicator that you may want to wick down um, just slightly in thickness, um, just or actually, sorry, just um, slightly in width to first see if the reduction in width helps to reduce the flame height and keeps keeps your full melt pool. But then if you reduce it the width to, say, a 0.5 and um, you're now getting tunneling, you'll want to maybe decrease or go back up to the 0.625 in width to make sure that you're getting that full melt pool.
but then decrease in thickness. So say you're using a 0.02 thickness, you want to maybe try a 0.01 thickness and so on and so forth. So a good rule of thumb for use or for um, making uh, soy candles. So if you're using 100% soy wax, it's a super sticky, um, super uh, hard to burn wax. And so you're going to need the biggest, the most amount of wood material possible in order to make that burn properly. And so I always say the rule of thumb is start with a 0.04 thickness for um, soy candles, 100% soy candles, and then um, see how that behaves and go from there. Um, beeswax is also very similar. If you're using 100% beeswax, it's super sticky. So make sure that you're using as much wood material as possible um, to start that and so on and so forth. Um, cotton wicks are a little bit different in that way. Um, cotton wicks, really, you want to make sure that you are buying the um, right um, the right thickness or the right size of the cotton wick um, to give you a full melt pool. Otherwise, you know, I think most of us maybe here have bought a candle from say Walmart or something and you get it home and it's tunneling yeah. the whole way down and you're like, you think that maybe that's normal <laughs> or <laughs> something, but it's not normal guys. Um, wicks should be optimized to give you a full melt pool. And if they're not, you're gonna wanna revisit that, so. One question is um, where would you start with wooden wicks with coconut apricot cream? That's great. Uh, well, coconut apricot cream, I'm definitely biased. It's my favorite wax. <laughs> um, I know it's the most expensive, but it's worth it. If you're using a single ply wooden wick, you will want to use a 0, .0 probably start with like a 0 .02 uh, single ply wooden wick. If you're using a booster wick, you'll want to start with probably a 0 .01 or one of like a smaller booster. Um, because you don't need as much wood material. Um, but you can really get away with using single ply wicks for the um, cocoa apricot cream. And I've seen really good results with the single ply. So I would start with the single ply. And if it's not burning as hot as you want, you can move up to the booster wick. Um, but yeah, that's where I would start. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it kind of sounds easier because it's like a, a limited amount of variation than mm -hmm. if you were to go with cotton wigs because it's so many different series right yeah and and you know it's kind of hard to like compare cotton and wooden as like apples to apples i really like to think of them as apples and oranges because because they are so different it's a great way to look at it yeah <laughs> amazing yeah well thank you for giving us so much insight i did not know how much chemistry is involved with your wigs and i didn't know that you're supposed to wick test every time you change fragrances. That was very, you know, life changing. Now I, I want to like go wig test because I'm <laughs> so, like ready to burn test. Woo like, yeah, you got me motivated. So I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining Boss Vision for this amazing, you know, overview of the importance of burn test. Hope this can motivate others too. It motivated me. So hopefully it can motivate you guys to do the same and enhance your wig testing. I think Mixie has a brand new cotton wick series as well as mm -hmm. amazing wooden wick series and the boosters as well to try. So definitely encourage you to check out Mixie.com and then check out part one of this series if you haven't seen that already. You can find the link to Mixie in the bio of this video here. And yeah, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, your week, your next hour. Just live in your purpose and love life. Okay, bye. Thank you.